Content warning. Today's show features discussion of mental health and suicide attempts at its midpoint. You may wish to review this video before watching it with vulnerable or impressionable viewers, and you will find a link to some resources in our show notes. Viewer discretion is advised. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar installers and community solar projects in your area that will help you power your home and your car with clean, green, renewable energy. And by you. Support the show with a monthly donation through Patreon or a YouTube membership, or make one-time donations with Kofi, Bitcoin, or our swag store. Welcome back to TEN or Transport Evolved News, and Happy New Year. I want to start today's show with a quick editorial and an apology. Last week, we were scheduled to give you a clip show, but multiple winter storms and visiting family who changed plans due to the winter storms, kind of scuppered my editorial time that I had planned. Due to another storm this week, we also had to make the decision to scupper my plans to attend a convention in Seattle this weekend. But it does mean you get this show, so yay? I also want to make a correction from the last show of last year, in which I incorrectly stated the US federal tax credit for solar panels would roll down in 2024. That was incorrect. It will stay at 30% for the next 10 years, at which point it will drop down to 26%. Thank you to everybody who pointed out this error, and I'm sorry we got it wrong. It's CES time in Las Vegas, and while we're not there this year, there's still plenty of stories to cover on today's show. So let's start with Sony Honda Mobility. In 2020, Sony unveiled its first concept electric vehicle, a car which it referred to at the time as a technology demonstrator. Last year, it showcased a concept SUV and revealed its intent to make a series EV. It partnered with Honda to establish a joint venture to make that happen. And at this week's CES, Yes, we show the results of that partnership, the Alfila electric car. With 45 sensors for autonomous vehicle operation, the latest in-car entertainment and 5G connectivity, the Alfila is the most polished electric car we've seen from this joint venture to date. Sony Honda Mobility says deliveries will begin in the US in spring 2026, but we don't yet have final pricing or specs. As usual, when we know more, we will share. For some time, customers ordering a new Tesla have been given the option to pay upfront for Tesla's future self-driving software, a feature that's known as Tesla FSD. The amount paid for that feature has slowly increased since it was first offered. Buy a new Tesla today and FSD will add $15,000 to your car's sticker price. We don't know yet when FSD will push to all customers, although it is now available to anyone who purchased it, but it is technically still a beta software feature. What we do now know, though, is how many Tesla customers to date have opted to pay upfront for FSD. According to data published this week, 285,000 customers in North America, about 19% of Tesla owners there have paid for FSD. That's a long way from the 1 million users that Elon Musk had confidently predicted would be using it by the end of last year. We're back to CES now with the reveal of the Ram 1500 Revolution, Stellantis's official answer to the Tesla Cybertruck, Ford F-150 Lightning, Chevrolet Silverado EV and Rivian R1T, among others. Technically still a concept vehicle, the Ram 1500 Revolution features a massive 800-volt lithium-ion battery pack that the company says can add 100 miles, 160 kilometers of range in 10 minutes. There's too much to cover here, but the truck promises a choice of two or three rows of seats in the cab, all-wheel drive and all-wheel steering, and the ability to carry objects of up to 18 feet, 5.5 meters in length. There's promise of a range-extended variant for customers who want it, a collapse steering wheel and autonomous driving, and something called shadow mode, which will let the truck follow you as you walk ahead. 
This is actually going to be really useful on farms and construction sites. Also at CES, Volkswagen teased its next mass-produced car, the Volkswagen ID7 sedan. While we got to see a fairly close to production vehicle, it is still wearing full camo. Built on the MEB platform, the Volkswagen ID7 is based on the Volkswagen ID Aero concept we saw a few years ago. Volkswagen promises the ID7 will offer a WLTP test range of up to 700 kilometers, 434 miles per charge, which means we should expect official real-world ranges closer to 630 kilometers or 391 miles per charge. As with existing ID models, Volkswagen says the ID Lite and Hello Volkswagen voice control system will feature prominently in the ID7, alongside a new 15 inch center touchscreen display. Volkswagen says it plans to give the vehicle its official production reveal in Q2 this year. The second all-electric pickup truck to be built on GM's Ultium platform, the Chevrolet Silverado EV, shares a lot of its underlying DNA with the Hummer EV trophy truck. But Chevrolet is very keen to promote the differences between the two, publishing a new video this week showcasing the towing capabilities of the Silverado EV. Hitching up a pre-production Silverado EV work truck, or WT for short, to a 7,700 pound, 3.5 metric ton R V using a standard tow hitch arrangement, the video features the truck's chief engineer, who calls the truck smooth, controlled and responsive while towing. The Silverado EV WT variant will begin deliveries this spring and in 2025 will be available with a total towing capacity of up to £20,000, 9 metric tonnes. That's twice the official towing capacity of the Ford F-150 Lightning. Over the past year or so, we've been watching with interest as the world's electrical grid has become cleaner and cleaner as more and more renewable energy generation goes live. This week, we got the latest update in the energy mix of the US grid last year. And despite some economic uncertainty towards the latter half of the year, the EIA Electric Monthly Power Report shows that 2022 enjoyed the most renewables injected to the US grid ever. In total, year-to-date data through the end of October last year shows that renewables accounted for 22.6% of all energy generated. That's compared to 20.4% in 2021. With the US government offering generous tax breaks and incentives to both large-scale renewable energy generation projects and domestic photovoltaic solar panel installations, I'm eager to see how this year measures up. Automakers were flocking to CES this year to showcase their latest in-car technology and, of course, promote their roadmaps to transition away from ICE vehicles and toward EVs. And in addition to those two things, Stellantis announced something rather unexpected. A partnership with Archer Aviation that will see the two firms further an existing strategic partnership to bring the Archer Midnight eVTOL aircraft to production. In addition to offering Archer Aviation its series production expertise, Stellantis is making a total of $150 million of equity capital available to Archer over the next two years to use, quote, at its discretion, end quote. The Archer Midnight is a four-passenger plus pilot craft that can make short distant trips with zero emissions thanks to an all-electric drive system. Manufacturing of the Midnight is due to start in Georgia with Stellantis's help next year. At the start of last year, it's fair to say that General Motors' electric vehicle sales figures were pretty abysmal due to the stop, sale and recall of the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV. That recall was due to a dangerous manufacturing defect in all Bolt EV and Bolt EUV battery packs that could, under extreme situations, lead to a battery fire. But with production faults identified and rectified, GM was able to work through some of its backlog of recalls last year, as well as resume sales of its Bolt family of EVs. Despite that recall, GM announced this week that its end-of-year figures show that the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV had their best year to date, with GM announcing that sales were particularly strong among young buyers. GM promises that it will expand its EV productions to 70,000 units this year, and I should note that only 2% of all GM's vehicles last year were electric, meaning there's lots of work to be done.
At the start of January, Tesla published its official delivery estimates and production figures for the end of last year, totaling a record 405,278 vehicles delivered in the fourth quarter of 22. Although that figure was a record for the company, more than 50,000 vehicles higher than its previous record, as set in the previous quarter, the stock market reacted negatively to the figures as they missed official Wall Street expectations by nearly 15,000 units. It's important to note that Tesla delivered more than 1.3 million electric cars last year, which is far more than any other automaker delivered, and that should be celebrated. Some analysts, like Kathy Wood from ARK Investment, remain bullish about Tesla's future prospects, while other investors view a perceived lack of leadership at Tesla as a bearish sign that things could get worse. Right now, the bears seem to have it, with Tesla prices falling. Tesla isn't the only automaker to be suffering at the hands of the stock market bears, though. This week, Rivian also managed to miss expected targets for its vehicle production and delivery, suffering a similarly negative reaction on the stock market. Measured against its own previous production figures, Rivian had a record fourth quarter, producing 10,020 vehicles in the fourth quarter to reach a yearly production total of just shy of 25,000 vehicles. That's great news when you consider that almost half of its annual production came from that final quarter. But if you zoom out, things are less impressive. Rivian had confidently stated during its IPO during 2021 that it would make 50,000 vehicles last year, meaning its actual 2022 production figures were less than one half of what it said they would be. And when that happens, the stock market reacts very badly indeed. I'm going to be bringing you short shorts in a moment, but first, instead of an advert, I want to discuss a story that crossed our desks this week. And because this content warning involves discussion of mental health, please skip to the timestamp listed on the screen now if you need to. At the start of this week, a Tesla Model Y drove off a cliff in California, plunging hundreds of feet to the beach below. Miraculously, despite the Model Y being destroyed, all four occupants survived with minor injuries, a massive testament to Tesla's engineering. Many of you wanted us to cover this, and it is right that we do so. However, it's also right to cover the cause of the accident as revealed later this week. As reported in the middle of the week, the car was intentionally driven off the cliff by Darmish A. Patel, a physician from Pasadena who appeared to be in the middle of a mental health crisis and was intending to kill himself and his family. He has since been placed under arrest for that and, like the rest of his family, is still being treated in hospital. As someone who has and regularly still fights the, the demons of mental health and suicidal ideation, I want to make it very clear to anyone who is feeling the same and is watching this show that they know they are not alone. Know that there are people who care. There are people who have been and who are where you are now. But know that taking the lives of others or yourself is not the answer. You, you have a lot to give. And we hope that you will follow the links in the show notes if you need someone to talk to. It gets better. Some days it won't feel like it, but I promise it does get better. Thank you for listening. Let's head to the short shorts. Fiat has opened a new store for European customers to peruse, but it's a little different to your average auto dealership. Instead of a physical store, this one is in the metaverse, where the Fiat 500, Fiat's all-electric hatchback, features front and centre. At this week's CES, VinFast officially revealed the specifications for its upcoming VF6 and VF7 electric cars. The VF6 features a 59.6 kilowatt hour battery pack, while the VF7 features a 75.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. Pricing will follow soon. 
Also at CES, Mercedes-Benz announced a brand new partnership with various charging providers around the world that will see it develop its own branded rapid charging network for customers to use. They'll be able to pre-book a rapid charging session directly from their Benz. Audi published its official end-of-year delivery figures this week, showing that while sales of internal combustion engine Audi models fell during 2022, sales of its electric vehicles continued to rise. For a company transitioning to electric, this is a good sign all round. A Tesla mobile supercharging trailer, powered by Tesla's own Megapacks, caught fire unexpectedly on New Year's Day on location at a Tesla supercharger site in Baker, California. Why it caught fire is currently unknown, but as usual, we will report back when we know more. At CES 2022, Goodyear unveiled a tyre that used 70% sustainable materials and promised that it could reach higher percentages in the near future. And this year it did just that, unveiling a tyre made with 90% sustainable materials. Fermata Energy, a company that produces Chidemo vehicle-to-grid equipment, has released data this week claiming that a bi-directional EV charging station, like the ones it makes, could pay for itself in three years and earn its owners up to $15,000 over 10 years. Tesla has announced it will hold an investor day on March 1st this year, at which it will discuss progress being made on a brand new vehicle platform that it hopes to bring to market soon. It will be live streamed from Tesla's Gigafactory in Texas and includes a factory tour. Swedish two-wheel specialist Cake is back at CES this year with a new model called the Cake Ike. Offering impressive load-carrying capabilities, this new model features Cake's proven drivetrain married to pedals and an automatic gearbox for extended range, load-hauling goodness of well over 100 miles. Lightyear has officially opened the order books for its second solar electric vehicle, the Lightyear 2. The company promises that the car will be beginning production by the end of 2025, seat 5 with luggage, and have a starting price of under €40,000. Here's an interesting one. A patent revealed this week seemed to suggest that Tesla had applied for trademarks to use the Tesla name in making motors for electric aeroplanes and boats. But later investigation shows the trademark was applied for not by Tesla, but by a Tesla fan. Verge Motorcycles, known for the hubless rear-wheel design of its all-electric TS motorcycle, has unveiled a new variant of the TS designed for the US market. Called the TS Ultra, it will be sold alongside other TS variants to North American customers later this year. Tesla has long been criticised by some for the claims made of its vehicles in its advertising and sales materials, and this week it was fined $2.2 million by the Korea Fair Trade Commission after it was determined that Tesla didn't make it clear its cars cannot reach their advertised range in winter. The Auto Dealer Association of Illinois has lost a court case it tried to bring against the state for allowing both Rivian and Lucid to engage in direct-to-customer sales in the state. It had claimed the state had broken auto dealer legislation, but a judge has ruled against them. ZF unveiled something at CES that we never thought about being a product that would be useful in EVs, a heated seat belt. The company argues that the heated seat belt could help passengers feel warm without relying on in-cabin heating, but... Eh. McLaren has teamed up with Alafay Motors to develop powertrains together for future cars. For those who don't know, Alafay Motors is the company responsible for the in-wheel motors found in the Lordstown Endurance pickup and the upcoming Aptera solar electric vehicle that revealed its Delta design this week. At CES, ABB unveiled a new home charging station it's calling the Terra Home. Aside from being the first charging station with a wood panel effect trim, the company tells us that it will offer smart connectivity and apparently an open API for people to use. Piedmont Lithium has signed a new contract with Tesla that hopefully will see it supply Tesla with US sourced spodumene concentrate for use in its battery production facilities. The contract supersedes an older contract which was postponed indefinitely. BMW was busy at CES showcasing the iVision DEE, a car that it says previews some of the new car's design language and features we can expect in its next generation of EVs. One thing we shouldn't expect, though, the LED body panels that allow the iVision DEE to change colour. 
Japanese startup Ikoma has unveiled a new folding e-scooter that harkens back to the days of the Honda Moto Compo. The Koma Tatamel is so small it folds up into its own suitcase, which you can then of course put in your very own small, compact K-Class car. Frankly, I'd like one of each. In a public address this week, the president of Uganda announced that he wants the government to help citizens transition to electric vehicles by swapping internal combustion engine motorcycles for electric ones, subsidising each purchase by up to 50%. As we start a new year, Chevrolet is increasing the price of the Bolt EV by $900 for the 2023 model year. However, because the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV now qualify again for the US federal tax credits, the effective price of buying a Bolt EV has dropped compared to last year. Electric aircraft startup Asker Fly has unveiled a new vehicle at CES 2023, which it says will be the world's first drive and fly e VTOL craft. There have been flying cars before, of course, but none that combine e VTOL capabilities with the ability to drive on the road. Sales figures for the end of last year show that both the Cadillac Lyric and Hummer EV suffered significant sales drops in the fourth quarter. While that might suggest that neither vehicle has strong demand, it is also worth remembering that Ultium batteries were in short supply last year. Sales data from Europe shows that Chinese-made EVs accounted for $3.2 billion worth of EVs sold in Europe in November 2022, up from 165% from the year before. However, most of the cars that were accounted for were made by Western brands making cars in China. How do you make an electric sports car more sporty? Most people would say add bigger motors, but this week we learned via Autocar that Maserati is considering ditching super fast charging capabilities for slower alternatives in future cars so that it can improve power to weight ratios. A Latin NCAP concluded its 2022 crash tests by reviewing a Chinese made car called the GAC E10X, known as the EJS1 and ES1. I'm sorry, I said G instead of J. It's the JAC E10X. Built by Volkswagen backed Chinese firm, it scored zero stars on its crash test and it also didn't automatically shut off power to its battery pack. Volvo has officially opened the order books in the US for its all-electric seven-seat EX90 crossover. We don't have official range pricing or anything else yet, but Volvo has confirmed that all US spec models will come with its forward-facing LiDAR included as standard. Chinese brand Zika has unveiled a new variant of its Zika 001 electric sedan with a brand new 140 kilowatt hour battery pack. It achieves a claimed 621 miles, 1,000 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle. A Tesla owner in Germany was pulled over by police after they followed him for 15 minutes on the autobahn, asleep behind the wheel. After eventually stopping the driver, police found a defeat device in the car's footwell. FSD is not completely autonomous and requires supervision. I don't know how many times you have to say it. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Our final two stories are coming, but first a quick video teaser for the review coming next week of the Kia Nero EV. I think it's fair to say that both I and Kate had a fantastic time driving it. Vehicle to grid has quickly become a killer feature for new EVs. I mean, I'm frankly very grateful for it after we suffered not one, but three power cuts in the last week and I've been able to keep our home 
sort of functional using the power offered by our Ford F-150 Lightning. And of course, many other new electric car models on the market today offer some form of mains power outlet to help essential items stay powered. But I think many of us have forgotten a bit about the original Nissan Leaf and its excellent vehicle to home capabilities courtesy of Chidemo. This week, we were reminded just how useful that car and its V2G can be courtesy of a video from Nissan Australia showing how a winery owner in Australia uses his Nissan Leaf and V2G to store excess solar energy during the day to then run the winery at night from solar panels. It's a nice reminder that electric vehicles aren't just vehicles. And finally, when you think of the Mercedes-Benz brand, the choices are you think of its long and distinguished history of being the world's first automotive brand and, of course, the classic automotive icons it's produced over the years. You probably don't think about cartoon anthropomorphic characters having fun with giant whales and spaceships, but now that's an association your brain can make, courtesy of a brand tie-in between Mercedes-Benz and Super Plastic, a, quote, global entertainment brand that creates and manages a roster of world-famous synthetic artists and influencers, end quote. And that means that we've got another brand tie-in. In a new video published at CES, Benz has taken the erstwhile nodding dog of generations past and, with Super Plastic's help, turned it into the Super Dackle, a street-savvy, hip-hop-loving, tattooed-knuckle, medallion-wearing papa in shorts. Expect them and their friends to make appearances in new EQ merch as Mercedes tries to get down with the kids and probably sell NFTs in the process. Or something else like that. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, I'd like to give a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make your own switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. Plus, if you become a member, you'll gain access to a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. The show is also brought to you thanks to the amazing people at Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make that step towards energy self-sufficiency, either using solar panels on the roof of your home or through working with a local community solar project. Don't forget too to hit subscribe and the bell for this channel and for our second channel, Transport Evolved Take Two. And of course, we would love you to become a patron supporter or a YouTube member, but you can also tip us through Ko-fi or you can check out our cool swag store. And if you did like what you saw today, please consider adding a super thanks to your comment. It's easy to do and anything you send does help our channel grow. And we really would honestly appreciate you helping us out as YouTube has been a bit weird of late and lots of creators are suffering reduced revenue because of how the advertising world, the economy and everything else is rolling out right now. So anything you could send our way would be gratefully received. I will be back next week with another Roundup show. But in the meantime, please remember we try and publish content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, plus our Sunday musings and garden updates over on Take Two. Kate's taking care of the Sunday musings this week because I was due to be a giant fluffy animal and now I'm not going to be one. Anyway, whatever you enjoy next, I hope your weekend is a great one. And as always, keep evolving.